are listening to an audio article by the Common Constitution. Today's article is entitled, Trump Must Draw a Red Line in the Sand. I remember when my kids were little and my wife, now ex-wife, and I both worked. We had to drop the kids off at daycare. For a period of time, one or the other or both would wail, crying for mommy and or daddy, like we abandoned them. We felt bad, her more than me, but we got over it, knowing we would be reunited with the little tykes at the end of the day. But what if we had to drop them off, not at daycare, but life care, with little to no prospect of seeing them ever again? I would say not a chance, as would hopefully the overwhelming majority of parents. Short of tossing them off a train that's traveling to a death camp, what the hell kind of parent would voluntarily separate from their children? And I don't mean to save them from just potential harm, I mean to save them from certain death. But this is what the left is trying to convince us of, that Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador have descended into some sort of Khmer Rouge-type killing fields. Now, Central American countries are, in fact, the murder capitals of the world, but it is not certain death to stay there, as it was by being a Jew in Nazi Germany, or anyone who opposed Stalin, or Mao, or Pol Pot, leader of the aforementioned Khmer Rouge. Heck, as bad as it is down there, it's not demonstrably different from life in Chicago, with its 54 victims shot over Father's Day weekend alone. But we don't see parents in the Windy City voluntarily giving up their children to people in nearby states. But the left is just pushing the narrative for their own selfish ends. They don't give a crap about these law-breaking invaders or their offspring. They have only two goals in mind. First is how to win power back in Washington, and they think they finally stumbled on the winning issue complete with audio and video. And second is to build a new voting bloc large enough to sustain that power. If it were proven that these immigrants would likely vote Republican, the Dems would do a sudden 180 and expel every last one, children and all, and naturally the media wouldn't say a word. How do I know this? because they were completely mute during the eight years of Obama expelling illegals and caging children. So what happens now? Well, the president signed an executive order to temporarily halt family separation, basically ordering that parents and children be detained together. Next will be an immediate court challenge that it is cruel to keep entire families locked up, awaiting an increasing backlog of immigration cases. Leftists will judge shop until they find one who will issue a stay on Trump's executive order and will be right back where we started, which is what the left wants. Meanwhile, the Dems and their weakling Republican brethren on the right will attempt to push through some sort of amnesty, letting most off scot-free, and Trump and his supporters, like me on this issue, will end up on an island. My hope is that the president stays strong despite being hammered by all sides. However, it's beginning to feel like deja vu all over again. The Dems get what they want, and we get nothing but broken promises. Only this time it's worse that the Dems are bold enough as to not even promise us anything. In 1986, Ted Kennedy, the Lion of the Senate, promised that the amnesty for around 3 million illegals was it, that it would never happen again. They promised border security tomorrow for amnesty today. Reagan's mistake is that he trusted the lion bags of dirt. Now, despite the immense pressure, Trump cannot make the same mistake Reagan did. No matter what the cost, he must hold the line. He must use every ounce of political might and capital he has to build the border wall. Nothing less can do. The wall is the only thing that can stop this onslaught, and the Dems know it. However, if the president continues to heed the advice of weak Republicans and his family, we are doomed. Thank you for listening.